everyone, I hope you're all excited because we're going to have a cookery lesson and I'm going to help you teach your families how to make a cake. Now, it's up to you whether you make little cupcakes or one big cake, it really doesn't matter because I've got a very easy method um, so that you'll be able to make either. And I've got four children myself and by the time they were all your age they could all make a cake with this method. So let's go. Right, so to start with we need to get all our equipment ready. So we need a bowl, we need a pair of scales. Now your scales might look different to mine. So my scales, um, I've got a button to turn them on and a button to decide what measurement I'm going to use. Now you might have a, a, a some scales that um, have got a lever on that's going to move along like that. So when you get to the right amount, you're going to have to look for the right amount. Or you might have a set of scales that's got a top like this. It's got something hanging down. And you put your weights on one side and then you have to put your ingredients on the other so that you measure and make them balance. So you've got exactly the right size, uh, amount of ingredients. As I said, my scales, I'm going to be able to look at the numbers on the screen and maybe I can show you exactly what they are. See my screen here. And then we'll be able to measure the ingredients out together. So we've got our bowl, we've got our scales. So we're going to need either some cupcake cases or a cupcake um, mould or a tin. Well, some people use a tin, but I've got this silicone bendy, bendy bowl to put it in, and I can put that in the oven because it's made of something called silicon, and that won't melt when I put it in the oven. I find it a lot easier than a tin because um, tin sometimes I find quite tricky to push the cake out. So I might choose that. So if you're going to make cupcakes, you might need some cupcake cases. So, and then you could put those cases, and get one out, like that. You could put that case inside your cupcake mould. Again, my cupcake moulds are made from silicon because they're very easy to wash and put in the dishwasher. I nearly didn't tell you to turn the oven on. That would have been a bit, would have been a disaster because we really need it to warm up to the right temperature before we put those those cupcakes or the cake into the oven later on when we finish. So you need to ask your grown up to go and help you put your oven on. We need to put it on 180 degrees centigrade. And that way it will be exactly the right temperature to cook either your cupcakes or your large cake, whatever you decide to make. So now we need to think about the ingredients that we're going to need. So we're going to need self-raising flour, caster sugar, but if you've got normal sugar, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It can be brown or white, but caster sugar I've got today. Some kind of soft margarine. I use pure because we're not allowed milk in my household. So um, we use pure, but any margarine will do, any soft margarine. We need some baking powder. And we need some eggs. Now the magic thing about this recipe is that you can decide how big a cake or how many cupcakes you make by how many eggs you're going to use. But before we do anything, we need to wash our hands. And um, if you've got one at home, you might want to put an apron on so you don't get your clothes dirty. I've already washed my hands and um, don't forget um, like we are doing all the time at the moment, we need to sing our happy birthday song while, we, while we're washing them and make sure we're doing the tops and bottoms 
in between. Don't forget your thumbs and make sure your nails are clean. So, shall we get started? Well, today I'm going to make quite a lot of cake mixture because I'm going to make some cupcakes and a big cake because I've got quite a big family and I know that they really like to eat cake. And my daughter has to go out to work, so she likes to take cupcakes in her packed lunch. So I'm going to make a few cupcakes as well for her too. So shall we get going? So today I'm going to use three eggs in um, my cake mixture. So I'm going to get the eggs and I'm going to put my bowl back on the scales to make sure it is um, on zero. I'm going to put one egg in each shell in my bowl. And I'm going to take my next egg in each shell and put it in my bowl. And my last egg, because I'm using three eggs, now you might only use one if you're only going to make one lot of cupcake mixture. That would be plenty. But I'm going to use three because I want quite a bit of um, cake mixture. So I'm putting my last egg in its shell. I don't want to break it. I'm being very careful so that when I put it down, it doesn't smash the other ones. Put it back in the bowl and have a look. Now, my eggs in their shells weigh 200 grams. Now, I think I ought to make a note of that because I need that amount is really important so I'm going to go away and get my pen and make a note. Right so I've made a note of how much my eggs weighed in their shells. They weighed 200 grams in their shells and that's the amount that I need to remember. So if you're making cupcakes and only using one egg and that egg in its shell weighs 50 grams then all your other ingredients will weigh 50 grams. Now I'm going to take my eggs out of the bowl again very carefully. I don't want to break them. One, two, three. Now if my eggs were a little bit dirty, because my daughter works on a farm, so she brings me eggs home from the chickens and sometimes they can be a little bit dirty because they haven't been washed. So if my eggs were dirty, I would need to wash my bowl again because it might have dirt in it and we don't want any dirt in our cake mixture. We don't want any germs in there. But because these eggs were from the shop and I know they're very clean, I'm not going to wash them. But I'm going to put that back down so I know that my eggs weighed 200 grams. Now, we are going to put the ingredients in the bowl for our cake. So, all the ingredients are all going to weigh 200 grams now. That's all. Because I, my three eggs weigh 200 grams. So, I want 200 grams of flour. So, let's get my flour. I'm putting 200 grams. So let's weigh it out. Keep going. Now I want my caster sugar. It's all going to go in all together. So how much do you remember? That's right, 200, 200. Zero, zero. So I'm gonna make my scales go back to zero again. So I'm gonna press my button. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna 200 grams again. If you haven't got a scales like me, that you can press the button and make it go back to zero in between each ingredient. You might want to uh, measure them into little separate pots and have them around. Um, so you can just measure them and then pop it in um, into the one bowl. But my scales, I can press the button and make it go back to zero and everything's going into the same bowl. So I just carry on, so I'm gonna go back to zero again. What was that amount that we needed? That's right, 200. So I've got my margarine now, so I need to spoon in 200 grams. Are we ready? I'm using my fork because sometimes it's easier than a spoon. And I might need a fork a bit later. 
Oh, that was a lot. Right, 200 grams. Right, now this is the fun part. This is where we have to crack the egg, so we've got to be very, very careful. So do you remember? Three eggs. I can't put them in with the shells now, can I? Because that wouldn't taste very nice. So I need to crack the eggs. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use my fork. If my bowl had a very um, hard side, I would use that. But my bowl is made of plastic, which isn't as hard as metal, so it's quite difficult. So I'm going to crack my egg, and then break it in. In it goes. I put this eggshell to one side to put in the bin in a minute. And my other egg. One, two. Do you remember how many eggs we used? Well, I used three, didn't I? But you might only go be a, you might only going to be able to use one if you're going to have a small cake or some cupcakes. Three. So that's my three eggs. I put my shells to the side. Now, so we've got flour in there, we've got the butter in there, we've got the sugar in there, we've got the eggs. Do you remember what's missing? Right, now the baking powder. Now, do you think we're going to have 200 grams of baking powder? No, that wouldn't be very nice. That's the one ingredient that's not going to be 200 grams. We're going to put in just one teaspoon. Now, this is my little teaspoon measure. Just one teaspoon of baking powder. So I'll put my teaspoon in, give it a shake, and make sure it's just flat, and then I'm going to put it in the bowl. That's it. Now, we're just going to mix it all together now you can use um, your fork to start with to mix it round and round and just tell it all the ingredients are kind of nearly together um, but they might need a little bit more mixing. So let's start with just using the fork um, just to make it, to break it all up. I'm going to cut into that margarine because it's ever so big. I don't want all the flour and sugar to go on the table. Go, go round the edge. Cut into the margarine, turn it over, fold it in, just fold it in, around the edge, fold in the flour, keep going, that's it. Because we're using the soft margarine, it's quite easy to mix, and then you can, a bit like you mash banana or mash potato, that's why I quite like to use a fork. Then I can push it down with my fork and it mashes that butter into the flour. Turn it over. See, look, it's just turning over and over and mashing together. Now, when it looks like it's nearly all mixed together and you can't see any more flour, that's when we need to get a whisk. Now, if you've only got one egg, you can do this all by hand. So you can get a whisk. This is just one of the whisks that goes in my electric whisker, but it's absolutely fine just to use it like that. So you can get your mixer. You have to use your muscles, go round and round and round as fast as you can. Oh, it's like you need to be very strong. I'm gonna put it on the table because it helps me to keep it still. I'm going round and round and round until it's all mixed in. Can you see it's getting, it's getting very good. But because I've got three eggs here, because I'm making quite a big amount of cake mixture, I'm going to use my electric mixer. And this is my, where, if you were using an electric mis mixer, you would always need a grown-up to help you. And it's a little bit noisy. So I'm going to put my electric mixer in so put your hands on your ears if you think you might not like the noise. Are you ready? Now, when the cup 
colour has gone a little bit lighter, then you can see that it's ready. Right, put my mixture to one side now because um, I'm going to get all my cupcake and my bowls ready. So for my big cake, I need to make sure that I put a little bit of margarine or oil on the cake tin or the cake case so that it doesn't stick. So I've got some little spray oil here, so I spray it in and then rub it round with a piece of kitchen, kitchen roll that's nice and clean. We don't want to put any germs in our cake case, do we? So there's my cake case, it's got a nice lot of oil or a bit of margarine if you're using that in there. But in my cupcake cases, I am going to put some case cases in there, aren't I? Because that helps to get the cupcakes out when you need to pop them out. So pop those in here. Six cupcake cases. Oh, seven. Might as well use them all. There we go. So, right, I'm going to put my cupcakes to one side. Do my big cake first, shall I? Right, so. So I've got a spatula. Now this is made of the same silicon that my cake my cake case is made out of because it means that it's non-stick. But you can use a spoon or anything like that. So I'm going to put some of my cake mixture in my cake case. So I'm going to get a big scoop. Doesn't matter how much. Depends how big a cake you want. So I'm going to put two big scoops in there. Maybe a bit more, maybe three. Leave some for my cupcake cases. There we are, push it to the sides. There we are. Now that's gonna make, make a nice cake for my tea. Put that to one side. Now we're gonna do the cupcakes. So in my cupcakes, I think my daughter might like, she likes raisins and sometimes she likes chocolate chips. So, I think we're going to put some chocolate chips today. So I've got some chocolate chips here. I'll open them up. You don't want too many in there because otherwise they all sink to the bottom. So how many shall I put in? I'm going to put in two handfuls for her. One. Two. There we go. That's not the whole packet, it's about half the packet. There we go. So I mix those in, mix those in. Oh, she's going to really like these in her, in her lunchbox, to, isn't she? Now we're going to fill the cupcake cases. So I've got a, um, a spoon that I would eat my cereal with or my soup. So I need two of those because it helps. We've got two spoons. So I'm going to get one spoon of mixture and I'm going to use the other spoon to help push it down into my cupcake case. And that way I don't get my hands dirty. So one spoon of mixture and one spoon to push it into my cupcake case. One spoon of mixture and one spoon into the cupcake case. I keep going and until I filled my cupcake cases. If I haven't got enough cupcake cases, I might need to go get some more. So now we're nearly done and it's nearly ready to put them into the oven. But before we do that, we definitely need a grown up with us if we're going to go anywhere near the oven. So earlier, before we started, we turned our oven on to 180 degrees centigrade. And by now, it will have warmed up to exactly the right temperature now. So we can go to put it in. So if we're going to cook our cupcakes, these aren't going to take as long as a big cake. So I'm going to cook mine separately. My big cake is going to take about 25 minutes. So I'll put it in at 180 degrees centigrade for about 25 minutes and then I'll take it out and check it. 
my cupcakes, they're not going to take as long as that because they're not as big. So I think they might take between about 12 and 15 minutes. So you and your family can have a look to see if they're ready after about that time. A way to check if your cupcake is ready is to use a knife or a fork and to poke it in. And if it comes out with any mixture sticking to the knife or the fork, then, then it's not ready. It needs a little bit longer. So if you poke it in and it comes out totally dry, then you know the inside of the cake is um, perfectly cooked and ready to eat. But it's going to be too hot to eat just then, so you need to put it to one side to make sure that it all cools down before you actually have an eat. Before you actually eat it. Right, then shall we go? I'm going to go and put mine in the oven. So here we go. Look who's coming to the kitchen to see what I'm doing. It's my dog Mike. See, you can smell that I'm cooking and he's sat down on my coat. Well, Mike, you can't have it yet. Okay, let's take it over to the oven. Right, so remember, you're gonna have a grown up to help you. I'm gonna open my oven, my oven door. Now leave them to cook for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now what about the big cake? Let's go and have a look at that one. Do you remember how long we were gonna cook the big cake for? That's right. We were gonna cook it for about 25 minutes. In it goes. Leave it to cook for 25 minutes. Now, while it's cooking, it might be a good idea to help your family tidy up. So you can put all your bowls in the sink, make sure you clean the table that you've used really well, because remember, we need to get all those germs away. Now this bowl of washing up, that's not your grown-up's job to do, that's your jo job to do. So perhaps you'd ask them to help you help you get to the right height so you can put your hand in put your hand in use a brush to scrub inside make sure it's all clean and use nice warm water to clean your to clean all your utensils when you've cleaned it once it's a good idea to empty the water out and put some more clean water in nice more warm water with some more washing up liquid and clean them again because that way it gets all the dirt and the grease and grime off your pots and by the time you've done that your cakes will be ready, will be ready. do you think those cupcakes are cooked yet they definitely look ready now i think they're time to get out i'll go and get my um my oven gloves what about the big cake? How's that doing? Okay, shall we test my big cake? I've got that knife. So let's put it into the middle. Is it clean? I'll give it one more try in the other, in another space. Perfectly clean. It's ready. Now my cake is ready, I'm, my big cake, I need to decide what I'm going to do with it. So sometimes I cut it in half and put some jam in the middle and put some icing sugar on the top. But today I'm just going to put some icing sugar on the top. So I've got a sieve and I've got some icing sugar. And I'm going to put a little spoonful of icing sugar into my sieve and shake it on the top. Now here goes. Ready? Just a little shake on the top. It makes it look really nice. Look who's come down again to see you, it's ready. Mikey, it's not for you. There we are, all done. I can't wait to have that at tea time. Well, I hope your cakes look as nice as mine. So my daughter can take these in her pet lunches and we can have this one for tea. Happy baking. Make sure you send us some pictures when you do your cakes too.